this is Tim Hellman. And I'm Jake Tenpass. And this is Movie Talk. Today we're going to review the movie It Follows. It Follows is the critically acclaimed indie horror flick about a young woman who's constantly followed by a mysterious unknown entity which is trying to kill her. It was written and directed by David Robert Mitchell and filmed on a budget of just $2 million. The film stars Micah Monroe, Keir Gilchrist, Lily Sepe, Daniel Zavato, Jake Weary, and Olivia Lucardi. So Tim, what did you think of the movie? I loved it. I liked how nostalgic it was, how much it made me remember the horror movies I grew up on. It had that really late 70s, 80s vibe and it reminded me a lot of a John Carpenter movie. Yeah. The, the, mu the music especially. Yeah, I mean the, the whole like very synth heavy score uh, was very reminiscent of that. I mean a lot of the shots even felt like they could have been shots out of the original Halloween. I enjoyed that aspect of it because I love movies from that era and so anything that reminds me of John Carpenter or even like some of the stuff from the Dario Argento movies at the time I'm a big fan of. I love I, movies that remind me of my childhood for just for the nostalgic feel. I would say that I pretty much enjoyed the first like hour of the movie quite a bit and was really into it. And I guess I just had some expectation that it was like building to something awesome or <laughs> at some point that you were going to like learn something about, yeah about, about learn something about what was following them uh -huh. not to be too spoilery but you don't learn <laughs> much about it yeah what did you think of the commentary on sexually transmitted diseases and yeah i mean it definitely i mean if, if the goal of, of the film was to be a critique of stupid uninformed teen sexuality it works better for me in that sense mm -hmm. because at the end of the movie all the characters are still doing the same stupid stuff that they were doing at the beginning of the movie as a critique of like you know us continuing to make the same mistakes over and over again and you know not learning from the mistakes of people before us it works mm -hmm. as a horror movie in which you want them to somehow better understand the evil that it is they're battling and be able to confront it it doesn't work so well or it's more problematic to me once it started to become about the mechanics of killing the thing the the mystery of it became silly and so the first hour where I was really like invested in it and and, and interested really quickly dissipated and by the end of the movie I was just kind of like huh yeah, I agree that it doesn't resolve itself very well, but I loved it because it reminded me of something I would have watched when I was a teenager on, like, USA Up All Night, or <laughs> yeah, like a fr yeah. late Friday night, Saturday night horror flick. With and I like, I like in general the idea of, like, people trying to mix art house with horror. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like that idea because, like, horror is a genre that regularly paints itself into a corner and like the innovation in horror movies oftentimes comes from the bottom comes from like low budget independent filmmakers who are trying something totally different so i like the fact that it looked and felt almost like gummo or something like mm -hmm. it almost like that was the other thing it kind of reminded me a little bit of like <laughs> is if you had had a horror movie starring the chloe Sevigny character from gummo and oh, yeah. her friends it might have been kind of like it follows yeah. um so i kind of you know i liked a little bit of that kind of harmony kareen almost aspect to the movie it's just ultimately that aspect of it took away from it being super scary or haunting to me after the fact some images were really creepy but there were, and there were some decent jump scares. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, there were some great scenes where like action is happening in the foreground or some kind of a dialogue is happening in the foreground and there's just a character creeping out I in the know, peripheral. I love those those were really effective <laughs> to me and I, and I really enjoyed them. I didn't think it was bad, I just think ultimately like the third act really kind of fell apart for me. Was, so what rating would you give it? Um, I think I'd probably give it three and a half out of five stars. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, I felt like it was a C. Like, yeah. if uh, you know, if we're looking at like you know, seventy percent. Like, it uh, again. I mean, I think about sixty-six percent of the movie worked, and thirty-three percent of the movie, you know, give or take, failed pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Somewhere between a three and a three and a half stars out of five for me. I give it a five. It's one of my favorite <laughs> movies of the year, and um, I just I love horror movies though. So. I might be a little bit bi more biased towards that. But. Yeah, because I hate horror movies. Yeah, <laughs> no, I love horror movies. <laughs> I know, yeah.